So Dumbledore, Morrigan, Morgan Le Fay, Jafar, Gargamel, or even just Orko. Whatever your choice, wizards are feckin' cool. Well, maybe not Gargamel, that guy kinda sucked. The Smurfs used to kick his arse every episode. Warframe have been absolutely cooking it lately. When it comes to new Warframes and of course reworks, Calervo, Dagath, Hydroids rework, now Inros's rework, our Chronicler, our Scribe, or our Void Wizard Dante, the 56th Warframe has arrived and he's really bloody good. He can boost defenses for you and the team with crazy amounts of overguard, he can crowd control, he can nuke rooms, and is just an absolute juggernaut of a Warframe. I really don't know what other way to put it. He is just really, really good and fun. His abilities all synergize really well with one another, which means you don't have to subsume something in or out if you don't want to, and his different combos of verses from his book give him a very interactive playstyle. This is him against level 220 steel path enemies in the simulacrum. Once he cast his tragedy ability, they are dead. Like I said, he can give an insane amount of overguard with enough power strength on your warframe. I've had over 80,000 overguard in some missions with players, making him pretty hard to kill and your teammates as well since you give it to them. Unless you're in an endless mission, in which case really high level enemies and that overguard is still going to get popped. So, to get your hands on Dante, you will need to run the new Disruption mission node on Deimos called Armatus. His parts all have a 5% chance to be rewarded from Rotation C, but as a reminder, Disruption missions, the rotations from them work a little bit different to other Endless missions. Instead of having the usual AABC rotation, Disruption works based on the number of conduits that you defend so if you stay in longer in disruption missions and keep defending those conduits, you can have a constant supply of rotation C rewards given to you. This is how the rotations work on screen right now. Because of this, Dante is an incredibly quick Warframe to farm. Players are getting all of his parts within 90 minutes to 2 hours of the update dropping yesterday, or you could choose to just buy him outright in the market or his bundle entirely up to you. So how does Dante work? Now Dante uses combinations of his second and third abilities to fill two pages on the bottom right of your screen before executing those combos into a final spell with his ultimate. It's really not that complicated, in fact it's pretty simple. You can have two spells cast and then execute them, but you need to have those two pages full before you can cast his ultimate. If you only have one page filled then you can't cast it. Now Dante's passive scans targets and gives you a 50% status increase against targets that you have already scanned into your codex. His first ability is his Noctua, which is his exalted weapon, his exalted tome, that shoots projectiles that will then split into four fragments on the initial impact with enemies. So your first shot will hit a target, then it will split into four additional shards and seek out enemies nearby the initial target inside a 60 degree angle. It deals slash damage and its alternate fire is a radiation wave that hits incredibly hard. The overall damage on my Noctua when fully modded is over 450,000 damage. Now his second ability is called Light Verse. Casting this will imbue Dante and your teammates with Overguard. It will also heal them and it also determines your Overguard cap. As you can see mine with mods is 56,000. Now his third ability is his Dark Verse. Dante will inflict slash damage to enemies in a 50 degree frontal cone. These can tick for a lot of damage and will scale off power strength, so more power strength, more numbers. His ultimate ability is where the real fun begins however, his final verse. Now final verse like I said will execute the two pages that you have filled in in the book. So if you double cast your Light Verse which is his second ability, it will fill both pages with Light Verse. Then if you cast his ultimate, it will give you a huge chunk of overguard instead of the small amount of single light verse cast that you would have been doing. Mine gives me 18,000. It also gives me overguard per second for every enemy that I kill for two seconds. Now if you choose to fill his book with two casts of the dark verse, which I would highly recommend, which is his third ability, this is the one that spreads slash procs. You can then cast his ultimate final verse and it will consume all of the slash procs on enemies in that room. It's basically a room nuke. Similar to Equinox's room nuke, for me, this is his most powerful ability. Mine has an 11 times multiplier without molt augmented or growing power kicking in. So it will consume all of those slash procs, multiply them by 11 and deal a lot. And I mean a lot of damage. And it's got a 43 meter radius and those slash procs from the Dark Verse don't suffer from line of sight either. 
yet maybe they will eventually so it is like i said really really powerful now this is where it's getting a little bit complicated for some players if you cast his second ability and then his third ability so you have a light verse and a dark verse inside his book and then you execute them with your ultimate it will cast ward warden which will create a spectral version of your noctua tome who floats beside you and it will mirror your weapon attacks dealing 30 percent of their damage now if you flip that around and cast the dark verse first and then the light verse his three and his two and then execute them with your ultimate it will cast page flight which will spawn three owls or peregrine falcons which will deal slash damage will make enemies more vulnerable to status effects which is absolutely amazing having that dot on enemies but they will also draw aggro away from you so enemies will focus on them and not you meaning you are now free to spread slash procs and absolutely melt them so basically the typical rotation with your dante is going to be casting two light verses then executing them to get as much overguard on you as possible then it will be make sure you have page flight up as much as possible which is the peregrine falcons then it will be ward warden make sure you have that up as well and then it kind of consists of you just running around spamming the slash procs and nuking the rooms while also using your noctua in between if you want to or if you haven't subsumed it off or something else that is so he is very interactive you are going to be using his abilities a lot which means you will need a decent amount of energy regen his Noctua, like I said, the Exalted Tome can put out serious damage, but having those Dark Verses cast twice and then nuking the room with his final verse is definitely where he stands out for me. Now, using Rhino's Roar to double dip those Slash procs if you wanted to from the Dark Verse and then the Tragedy cast, which is when you have two of them together and then you execute, is really powerful. It also allows you to use your favorite and cannon weapon if you want to subsume Rhino's Roar on for his first ability to get rid of the Noctua, but I kind of like the Noctua or maybe you prefer running around Witcher and Karnan weapons entirely up to you now for modding him I would recommend focusing heavily on power strength and energy regen just a bit with maybe a small bit of range mixed in as well duration I felt wasn't really needed since the base duration of most of his abilities is pretty high but this is how I decided to mod my Dante 362% power strength I've gone all in this is giving me over 60,000 overguard once throwing power and molt augmented kicks in arcane energize and equilibrium are what is giving me my energy regen with zero issues but i also have my sentinel dropping orbs just in case but you can also have the tome mod the crack canticle on your noctua if you want to have those extra universal orbs but i didn't feel like i basically needed it brief respite prime sure footed power drift are other options if you want to use them especially if you're going for more endless type missions since that overguard is like i said going to be born through pretty fast at higher levels um, it's basically look it's up to you your warframe your game go nuts for my noctua however the exalted tome this is the mod setup that i went with the noctua's passive is that it can use all tome mods without any restrictions you can pop them all on there and have nothing but tome mods if you want to but i've chosen to ignore those altogether i've modded mine for crit and flat damage Corrosive and heat or viral and heat with creeping bullseye giving me 90% crit chance or over 100% crit chance with his uh, alt fire which can be boosted by arcanes if you want to because arcanes equipped on your secondary weapon will carry across to the noctua since it is categorized as a secondary weapon i currently have cascadia flare on my secondary weapon which carries across and increases the damage of my noctua by 480% for 10 seconds also having tenacious bond on your sentinel will bump your crit damage up as well arcane secondary outburst is also an option that a lot of players are using since the noctua is counted like i said as a secondary weapon and if you want to run with it entirely up to you overall dante is powerful he's not busted his overguard will get born through pretty quickly at higher levels and in order to get him to deal the damage that he does it takes a lot of arcanes a lot of mods and a lot of former other frames like Colervo, Saren, even the Hydroid are arguably just as powerful. His playstyle basically caters to various different players, from solo to group to support to room nuke. Overall, he's just a really well made and well thought out frame from Digital Extremes. But let me know in the comment section below what you think of Dante, whether you like him or not, if or when you get your hands on him. I will be spending the day on Inros trying to get the most out of his rework over on Twitch, so the link to that is in this video's description. Have a great day, have a great week, and as always, thanks for watching.